Okay, for today's video, we're going to start showing how to wind the armature wire onto the armature of our electric motor. This is the electric motor that powers the electric car. If we put it in the test stand, we can see that this spins when you apply a voltage to it. So there's my test stand, a pair of batteries, a pair of magnets, commutator segments with brushes. Turn it on, give it a push, and it runs. But in order to get to that point, we have to start at the beginning, which is to cut a piece of plain steel rod, or flat steel stock. It's a half an inch wide, about an eighth of an inch thick, and I cut it about two inches long, two to two and an eighth inches long, and drill a hole dead center, measuring carefully both ways, lengthwise and crosswise, to put a hole dead center that I can solder a piece of welding rod into. This welding rod has been sharpened on the end with a file by putting it in a vise or in a, uh, a lathe, or you can do this in a drill press. But the two points on the end make that a low friction armature that will spin quite nicely without too much trouble. For the soldering portion, I run the little center area across a grinder to clean it up before trying to solder. To keep that from being short-circuited across the wire, I wrap the armature core in two layers of electrical tape. I'm using yellow here so I can see what I'm doing through the windings. And I've got about 18 to 20 feet of number 26 gauge magnet wire that will wind on here in one continuous coil. The extra wire that I need later gets wound around the end of the shaft so it's out of the way. And we'll get back to that at the end of our winding process. And then to start the winding, I get this arranged in my hand so that I can wrap slowly, carefully around the shaft or around the core and I can make that even layers or even wraps that don't cross each other. I'm putting as much tension as I can on. That's the beauty of having this wooden stick as a handle. And as I wind, I'm letting the stick unroll to feed more wire so I can keep tension on it. And this will take a while. So while you go get yourself a snack or go watch some TV commercials, I'll wind here until I get to the end of the bar and then we'll come back and do some more. <clears throat> okay, we're back. I've got windings that go from the center of the bar out to one end, and I'm ready to just reverse direction and start winding another layer in the same direction, or the same direction of coiling, on top of the first layer going back toward the center. And this will give me two layers of coils. And this is a little more tedious because it's harder to see what you're doing. We'd like to keep from crossing the wires over itself because that will help us get about the same number of turns on both sides of the armature, which will keep it balanced. All right, I'm almost back to the center, and it's important that you see that I don't change the direction of winding as we go across the center bar and keep winding on the other side in the same manner. We're going to wind all the way out to the end of the bar, I say all the way to the end, it's actually important that we stop a little before the end. We don't want these wraps to come falling off the end of the armature when the motor's running at high speed. That's also the reason we try to make sure that the wire is wrapped as tight as I can hold it. Now here as I near the end, I'm being certain that I get as much tension on the wire as I can to make it a nice tight wrap. And I'll stop before I actually get to the end of the bar, try to compare both ends. I'll stop about the same place, which means I'll stop right here. 
and I'll start winding back again towards the middle. And when I get back to the center, I should have about the same amount of wire on both sides of the armature, which would help to keep it balanced. And I repeat, the reason to keep it a nice, neat wrap is to have about the same amount of wire on both sides of the armature, which will keep it balanced so it'll spin without vibrating too much. Then I'm going to need about three to four inches of wire when I'm done. And you can see that I, I estimated pretty close. I've got a foot and a half of wire left over. So I'll cut that off and then we're done wrapping the armature wire for the coil. But right now we're going to take the extra wire that we started with and have that unwound and available to work with for the commutator segments. Now the commutator segments are the parts of the motor right here that get the electricity from the rest of the motor into this coil. So there's two of them. They're copper foil sheets. I'm going to get better prepared here. Copper foil sheets that will transfer the electricity from the brushes of our motor into the rotating coil. So let's stop that. So I'm going to cut this wire off so it's just a little longer than the shaft of the armature. And then I have to clean the lacquer or enamel off this wire so that I can make an electrical contact. I like to do it with a razor knife and I just scratch it off or scrape it off. Some people will want to use a piece of sandpaper to do this. And I find that with the razor knife it's quick and easy for me. And after I get both of these cleaned off so I can see the shiny copper, I'm going to trim them back so they're only about an eighth of an inch long. Because that's all I need to solder to my commutator segments. So those are now a little longer than I need them to be. I'm going to cut them back so they're only about an eighth of an inch long of, of wire that's cleaned. And then I'm going to bend them at a 90 degree angle just to make them sideways. That makes it easier for me to solder them later. I've got a little soldering stand and that's got a hole in it to hold up the armature. And it's also got a clamp on it made of a clothespin that's going to hold the armature, seg the commutator segment for soldering. So a couple of things I need to do first is to prepare the armature shaft to accept the commutator segments by putting a piece of vinyl tubing on there and that is eighth inch inside diameter and quarter inch outside diameter. It fits on pretty stiff which is good and I selected this size because it increases the size of the armature shaft large enough to work with. And then I'm going to form these commutator segments over a screwdriver blade or I can just use this quarter inch dowel to make them the right shape. So I've just pushed those into a semicircular form on the dowel and then I use this clothespin, it's hot glued on, to hold the dowel in place and with a soldering iron and a little bit of electrical solder I can get a little puddle of solder on there. That's called tinning the commutator segment. I'll also want to tin the wire that it's going to be soldered to so that during the actual soldering process I won't have to hold the solder. And I just turn this over, try to get a grip on it, hold it up next to the solder tin spot on my armature segment, commutator segment, boy I get my names all mixed up, and hold still while the solder cools. Undo the clamp and I've now got a commutator segment soldered to the end of my coil wire.
We'll do the other side, we'll do the whole process. We'll tin the end of the coil wire. Get a little bit of solder on there. We'll form the shape of the commutator segment over the quarter inch dowel. A little bit crooked, let's straighten that out. That looks good. Then clamp that under the clothespin so it doesn't move around while I'm trying to solder to it. Get a little bead of solder on the segment. And then I can join the wire to the commutator segment by just reheating all the soldered parts. And hold still while it cools, open the clamp, and it's attached. Now to use up this extra wire that I've got, I'm going to hold a piece of 16th inch welding rod right next to the, the motor and just wind up the extra wire on that and make a little coiled spring out of it. This gives me some spare wire to work with later for timing the motor and it gets that extra wire out of the way. I'm being careful not to beat up the wire connections too much so they don't break on me. So these two commutator segments can now just be pushed down onto the plastic insulating tubing, arranged so that they don't touch each other. They can't actually come in contact because they'll short circuit. And then I tape them down with some skinny tape. This is electrical tape that I've cut into a, a skinny roll. I used to cut strips of electrical tape on a flat board, and you might do the same. But now I have a whole roll of it. And we'll put another roll of row of tape on the inside edge of the commutator segment. Someone said, how much tape do you use? I said, well, about four layers. I don't stretch this tape because when it tries to unstretch itself, it becomes unstuck. And I use good quality electrical tape so that it has good adhesive on it. There's a little bit of space between the two strips here and on the other side. So when those go into the motor, each commutator segment will touch one brush as the motor rotates. And the, I want the split between them to get to the brush right about the time the end of the armature gets to one of the magnets. So when I turn this on, it rotates fine. If I Give a little more pressure on my brushes, which spin a little faster. Well, time for a little WD-40 on there. It actually improves the electrical conductivity. So this motor is now ready to go into a car.